All right, guys, we're back. We're working on the kit car, uh, installing the clutch cables. Sorry, the clutch, uh, bleeding the clutch, and installing the uh, shifter cables and linkage. The shifter. Um, what else? Is that it? That's all we've done? Jacob's here. He's helping me. Um, yeah, that. And uh, yeah, so I'll have Jacob help me walk you guys through all that. Uh, it's been a pain so far, kind of, so. All right. Here's your uh, clutch line, and then, ah. Oh, you can pull the ECM up right here, if you look. Sure, right here. Give you a lot more room, you can pull this ECM up. Okay. Just get it out of your way. That's what we did anyway. Just folded it up up there. And it'll access where okay, I can the see clutch line goes in here. So you've got, or here's your blader screw. Let's get over, I can't see that one. You can see the blader screw in there. And then, so that's gotta be pressed on there good. It's There's right a little rubber the gasket. That's it, where I'm pointing that with my finger. But we had it, it wasn't pressed on there good and it was leaking fluid and air out the bottom, but we got it seated uh, on there good, bled it, and then we were good to go. We literally uh, actually popped the bleeder screw off and literally we pumped the clutch pedal just like the brake and it worked fine. So. Uh, you don't have to buy a you know a kit or anything. Literally, literally, you can use the um, use this this little cylinder on the the clutch. And I felt it as Jacob was telling me to pump it. I felt it pull from here and get into the hose, and I I could start feeling feeling like resistance, like I was actually pushing fluid. And uh, sure enough, it didn't take long, and that was shooting out the back there. But we're gonna have to take it all back off anyway. Yeah, along with everything else because we got a small water leak it's pretty bad actually <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad the whole uh the whole motor we gotta drop the whole motor so in the bell housing tom I took a little video of it. he'll post it on here but on the bell housing where the flywheel is you can kind of see it in there it uh ah, okay water just pouring out of it. And I don't really know what, the only thing that it could be, everything else on the motor is dry. Inside the bell housing that would cause it, the water pumps on the other side of the motor, the only thing that would really cause water to get in there is the freeze plugs on the inside. So that means we got to pull the motor, pull the transmission off and the flywheel and pop a $3 freeze plug in it and then put it all back together. So we really think that's probably what's going on with it. Um, seems to be the only thing that it could be from what we're talking to people about. Uh, we thought maybe the water pump for a minute, but the water pumps all the way over here and I don't think it's a seal in the engine or anything. Um, I, I think it just all all signs point to freeze plug, right? That's yep. what we're kind of thinking. Yeah. Uh, I was really hoping we'd get lucky and it would just be like a loose hose somewhere, um, but it's just not the case. So we, uh, yeah, I've started it multiple times, revved it up multiple times. It's never done anything like this, and then out of nowhere, bam! But it was in a wreck, you know. And this is what happens when you buy a. Uh, vehicles that have been in wrecks, right? Well, I think it's just bad luck for the free plug. <laughs> yeah, or that, which sucks. He jinxed us though, tell him what you said. Well, yesterday, it's been all day, not all day, about three hours, trying to get the stupid shift linkages fixed. Right, and they're still not completely right. But today, first thing, we start diving into the clutch, located the leak, fixed it probably 20 minutes. I told Thomas, said, we're good, we're making pretty good progress today, we need to keep this up. So then there's, like, okay, we'll work on this water leak that we got back here, thought maybe we had a loose hose. Our progress did not keep it going. No, it's pretty terrible, it's pretty disappointing. We're gonna take about 15 steps backwards, but. That's all right. Preserve Yep. Um, real quick though, uh, I'm gonna have Jacob show y'all 
like which cable goes to which side up on the shifter and uh kind of give you all some more pointers on the shifter okay. because it was a it was it was a beast for us to handle here. or okay just look right here the top one right here it's gonna go on the right side so right here is gonna be the right side on the shifter linkage this one is for the up and down when you're moving the gear shift up and down to go into first second yeah. third fourth fifth sixth or fifth reverse that's this one now this one will be on the left side that's for the back and forth that's because it's just got two positions it'll go up or back or in the center well i guess it's got three positions all it all it does is allowing you to get uh, access another set of gears basically yeah. so then left goes left right goes right you'll be good left goes left right goes right and literally the right side allows you get to go to third and fourth basically like up and down and then to, to motion left to right that's going to be your left cable and the left side in the back um, that whole thing flexes not too happy with the base plate that everything sets on the whole tunnel cap flexes you know and everybody talks about it um, I may see what I do about fixing that. I'm super happy with the shifter and stuff, um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I probably will end up buying DFs uh, to do a comparison video, just to see which one I like better, but uh, it still looks super clean. Go ahead. So I said at the beginning of the video that trying to get the length for this part right here, right? Because like I said, this stays stationary. This rod is what actually moves, and the, the overall length of it can be adjusted by this end or the end I showed you in the beginning of the video. We ended up having to, I don't remember which one it was, but we needed a, we had it screwed all the way in. I needed it to be just a little bit shorter. So I pulled it off and I just took a quarter band and cut off about a half inch on the threads and yeah thread it back on. on this part like yeah. not in the back i think it was in the front one wasn't it it was on the front one but so yeah. you could do it either one the, just trying to get the you're the, just pulling length out of length, it right? yeah looking at this i probably wouldn't have had to just because there's some threads here but that's just part of trying to get it adjusted right but we've got it pretty close right now so best uh best advice we got was uh you you want the car in neutral and you want these pointing straight up and you want your shifter pointing straight up, just like a normal shifter, in neutral. So if you pull straight down, you'll be in fourth. This um, is what I figured out. The best way to adjust it is I, on the back. I undid the linkage for now. The forward and back, the right one, it's easy. The one you're gonna have trouble with is the left one, the side to side. So what I ended up doing is I unhooked the linkage on the back. I told Thomas to put it over. And in first. Now, for him to put it in first, that linkage had, or that pivot point back had to be in the right spot. So once he got it in first and I had it disconnected, I just adjusted it to where it would be right there where it needed to be. And then popped it back on there. And so it was the first in the actual transmission and first in the shifter. And that gets it pretty close. And you can do that with the other ones too, but as long as you get one of the gears, the other one should be pretty close. Yeah. I wish there was some like super easy magic trick to all this, but I think a lot of it's trial and error. You just literally have to sit there and wear yourself out with it. And now we've worn ourselves out with it and we have to pull the engine, which is pretty much uh, horrific in all aspects. Not thrilled about it, but I mean, realistically, I think we could do it in a day now. That's what we discussed, right? Um, but man, it just, it does suck. You know, you get this far, uh, we weren't far from driving it at all. We were getting ready to uh, put it on the wheels. We were going to drive it today. Yeah, we were, we were going to try to drive it today. Yeah, it's uh, just really depressing. But it's what it is. We'll whip it, you know. Um, but yeah, that's the update so far. And uh, the next video, I guess, will be of us uh, pulling the engine. I still have to do the collars on the front. I still need to put the... Uh, snap ring on the steering steering rack and i've got a coolant leak on my heat exchanger from where i didn't put teflon tape on uh, my little plastic fittings in the back which will be an easy fix but <sighs> now uh we got bigger fish to fry so anyways uh, anything else we need to add no 
All right. Well, guys, uh, thanks for watching again. Uh, sucks to go out like this for right now, but it is what it is. At least I am moved uh, into old Pop's garage, moved down to Dad's garage here in Pikeville, Tennessee. Um, uh, if you're interested in seeing a goblin or whatever and you're around the Chattanooga area, hit me up. Uh, I will gladly let you come look at mine. Um, it's going to be here for at least December. Uh, we're building a house in Chattanooga and uh, supposed to know something. Uh, ho hopefully supposed to be in it by uh, December. So we'll see. But either way, I've got plenty of space in here and he's cool about letting us use the space. Um, and we're going to keep hammering away at it. Um, if you need any any questions answered, uh, just hit me up on the description below. Comment, like, uh, and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next time.